Hello, everyone. Welcome to MBA Spotlight. Today's topic is Wharton, who should apply and how to get in. My name is Rachel Nelson, and I work for Gatehouse Admissions. Um, and uh, Gatehouse was founded by Liza Wheel, who is an MBA from Sloan um, and an ex Um, And we are a pretty small team of consultants who've all attended Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton. And um, our focus is very much around delivering high-touch MBA coaching. Um, for us, it's really not a transaction, but very much about a partnership. Um, and we do offer deep expertise across the team. Um, all of us have an MBA, and some of us actually have admissions committee expertise as well. So um, a little bit about me. Obviously, I do work for Gatehouse now. I've been a consultant for about eight years. Uh, I went to Harvard for college and then to Wharton for business school. And prior to that, I worked at American Express at GE, Bank of America and Merrill Lynch. Um, and I first started getting involved in admissions consulting because I really loved alumni interviewing. So um, that was how I um, kind of started to become interested in the topic. Um, all right, let's advance if we can. Okay. So we're going to kind of talk through some of the basics, fact versus fiction on Wharton. What is it really about? Uh, what is Wharton looking for? Some application tips um, uh, and essay tips. And then we'll talk a little bit about the interview, your next steps, and then answer any um, potential Q&A if there's time. Okay, so Wharton fact or fiction. So uh, let's advance the slide. Three very common myths are that Wharton is only for people interested in finance, that it is incredibly competitive within the student body, and that it is stodgy. So let's find out if those are in fact truth or fiction. Okay, so um, Wharton is very strong in finance, that's true. So it is a great spot for bankers, investors, consultants, uh, people interested in private equity and VC. But um, if we advance, yep, um, it has a wide variety of concentrations. So it has um, economics, public policy, business, energy, and the environment, marketing, operations, um, pretty much runs the gamut. Um, so is much more than um, just a place for investment bankers. In particular, it's very well known for its focus on healthcare and also for the Lauder Institute. And we'll talk a little bit more about Lauder later. Um, it has a really robust set of electives as well as a very strong core curriculum. Um, and it is deeply, you know, very well resourced um, and rated uh, at the top um, or high in the top 10 across many different disciplines. Okay, let's advance. Um, okay, so is it competitive? So if you, yeah, take a look at the clues, right? So we know that Wharton's essays, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, really are focused on um, how is Wharton going to help you? But equally important is how are you going to participate in the Wharton community? So what are you going to do as part of that community? And that um, gives a really good sense of the importance of community to Wharton, right? Because they are obviously um, seeking out people who are going to be helpful to their fellow classmates and bring something to the community um, beyond just their academic pursuits. Um, and you can see this also in the interview approach, which we're going to talk about as well in a minute, um, but it is a team-based approach to the interview. So it's very much about how you collaborate and work with others to achieve a common goal. Um, there is a short aspect of it that will be kind of one-on-one -on -one questions, but really um, the heart of the interview is in trying to understand how you're able to work with other people. And um, the interview very much matches Wharton's um, learning team structure. So most classes, certainly in the core, are taught um, you know, with uh, the learning team structure. Um, and then obviously, I, I kind of referenced it, learning team. Um, okay, so last topic is stodgy. And um, Basically, I think in the olden days, Wharton really was a place for, as we talked about, for finance, but it was seen as um, a, an incubator of CFOs, and it's moved way beyond that at this point. So obviously, um, 
you know, there's a real focus on kind of current things that people are interested in, current professions that, that um, graduates might pursue. So gaming, um, venture labs, there's now a campus in San Francisco that's great for VC tech and entrepreneurship. Um, and there's a real focus in sort of like extracurricular or activities outside of the classroom. So uh, there are a wide variety of ventures that class uh, that students can take part in and a number of modular courses that allow students to learn on the job skills in different places outside the US. So definitely has moved beyond, uh, you know, kind of what we might think of Wharton as being historically. Uh, let's advance if we can. All right. So the path forward, um, I won't go through all of these stats, but the key takeaway is that Wharton is incredibly, incredibly diverse. The student body hails from across the globe, and I would say Wharton prizes that. We'll talk, you know, about the Lauder Institute, but um, that ability to be multilingual, to have um, different perspectives, maybe in how you grew up or where you've worked, is something that Wharton really prizes. Um, you can see that people come from a variety of industries. Obviously, consulting and finance very well represented, but actually, there's a fair number of people coming from. Um, nonprofits or tech, healthcare, kind of across the spectrum. Um, it is selective in terms of the GMAT and the GRE or you know, GPA required, but it's also a big class. Um, and so that's something that sets maybe it and Harvard apart from um, a school like Stanford or, um, you know, kind of some of the other, Tuck would be another example of, you know, much smaller school. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind as you, um, look at your different um, different opportunities. Okay, let's um, advance if we can. All right, so how did Wharton um, students fare with their uh, you know, with their degrees? Ninety nine percent received job offer offers. Um, a large percent um, changed both industry and function. And if you account for those who changed either function or industry. Um, the vast majority of class, the class came out doing something different than um, what they did when they came in. So um, you can see obviously where they went heavily into financial services, not a surprise given um, Wharton being so well known for finance, but actually people going a lot of other places as well. And that percent going into tech and to healthcare um, definitely increasing as well. Um, and you can see obviously, um, you know, well compensated uh, students as well. Um, okay, so if we think about Wharton, kind of in summary, if we can advance the page, it's a well-resourced resourced school, it's well-respected uh, for MBA hires, meaning employers are looking to recruit Wharton MBAs. Um, they're back to this idea of being collaborative and, and kind of team players. They are perceived as people who will work together and can get the job done. Um, and the school itself provides lots of opportunities to get involved, to participate, to lead. Um, and there's clubs that kind of run the gamut um, and cover everything um, from, as you can see here, boxing and coding to um, investment management and out for business. So let's touch briefly on what Wharton is looking for. So if we can flip to the next slide, I mentioned it already, collaboration. Wharton is looking for team players. Um, it wants people who are not just analytical, although analytical skills are crucial, but also those who can um, get along with others and work on a team to get things done. Um, the, very much focused on innovation. This is kind of this idea of moving away from what Wharton used to be. Um, very focused on Wharton being a place of innovation, a place of entrepreneurship, um, and a place where change agents can grow and kind of do their thing. We talked about it being global. Um, we talked about analytical skills. Um, and, you know, kind of the last two pieces are really things that we talk about as being crucial for every business school applicant to pretty much every business school. All business skills, excuse me, all business schools are looking to see that um, you have leadership qualities and leadership potential to grow beyond what you've already demonstrated, and also that you have the ability to make an impact, right? So leadership and impact are crucial, and the more that you can demonstrate that in what you've done, it gives the business school an insight or a window into a sense of what you will do in the future. Um, so let's advance if we can. 
All right, so let's talk through the essays. Um, as I mentioned, essay one, how will you use uh, the program to achieve your future uh, professional goals, which is really what can Wharton do for you? Um, and the second one is, um, how do you plan to make meaningful contributions to the Wharton community or what can you do for Wharton? So let's kind of dig into each of these two essays. So what can um, Wharton do for you? So really what you want to do is, uh, can we, if we can advance the slide, um, and if we can advance it just a couple more, that would be great. Um, so we want to look at where you've been, right, which is the foundation that the business school knows um, so they kind of know what you've already accomplished. They know um, how you know what your goals are, right? They want to have some sense that you, um, th that you're actually, your goals are grounded in an understanding of what a job means to, you know, what it, what it is to do a specific job. Um, and so you've got your kind of foundation of where you've been. You're going to add in Wharton, which is everything that Wharton has to offer both inside the class and outside. And then if we can flip to the next piece, um, if we can add the next one on, yep, perfect. Um, it's going to be where you're headed, right? So that, you know, those two pieces together, where you've been, plus what Wharton's going to give you, um, helps them to understand that you're going to achieve your goals, right? So they're, they're looking to understand your short-term and your long-term goals, um, and really what you want your legacy to be. So, you know, it's about, um, really trying to, be a leader, trying to be visionary, um, and kind of linking the pieces together from, you know, where you've been to where you want to go so that the business school knows, even if you don't, you know, even if you decide to change path slightly, they know that you have the ability to think through how to get where you want to go. And it may be that an opportunity is presented to you or that something kind of, um, an obstacle comes up in your path, but they want to know that regardless of that, you're able to kind of, um, you know, use what you've learned at Wharton and your previous skills to adjust course and take yourself where you want to go. Okay, so um, essay two, what can you do for Wharton? So um, this is really about, obviously, what can you give back to the community? And it's a sh I would say both of these questions are very short, these essays. So you want to be very specific and very succinct. Um, you want to think broadly and you want to try to think um, about yourself, right? What can you bring that somebody else can't? So for example, um, doing alumni interviewing, everybody can offer that and everybody will offer that, right? Um, so what you want to do is really think about what are the things that you, because of your experiences, because of your particular skills, whether it's maybe dance club or um, your previous work experience or your hobbies or your past volunteering experiences, what are the things that make you you that you alone can bring to the community? And then you want to be specific. Um, so again, it's a short question. It cannot be a laundry list, um, but you don't want it to have one thing, right? You want this to have, you know, three, maybe four, maybe two, but probably three or four specific things that you're going to get involved in. Um, so, you know, it, there, there can sometimes be a little bit of an overlap between one and two, because some of the things around what you can do for Wharton may also be things that help you benefit from Wharton. Um, but, you know, you definitely want to make sure that anything that's in SA2 is really focused on how you're going to give back. All right. So if we can advance, perfect. Okay. So tips for Wharton's essays. First is research, research, research. This is true for pretty much all of your business school essays. You want to know the school in and out, but particularly for Wharton, the essays are short and they're looking for specifics. And so you are gonna to need to understand what Wharton offers and how you're gonna take advantage of it. Um, and so the key is to really be very clear on what your goals are, um, because that's how you're gonna know how Wharton is gonna help you get there. So I would really advise absolutely everybody to research and then to you know start thinking about what would it be like for you on campus? What would you choose to get involved in? Um, you know, how would you want to spend your time? Um, and then again, thinking back to what, what is, matters for Wharton, um, the idea of team, the idea of collaboration, the idea of kind of being part of an empathetic and caring community. Um, you know, these are things that will resonate with the admissions committee. 
Okay, so talking a little bit about the um, uh, team-based discussion. So Wharton has a slightly different interview process than other business schools. Um, the business school will send you a prompt uh, and it will provide it to you in an email. Um, and this prompt and this discussion will replace the one-on-one -on -one interview format that you find at the majority of other business schools. Um, so you can see in italics kind of a description of, you know, what they're trying to do, but really what they want to do is mirror the team setting that exists in a Wharton classroom and figure out who um, will be able to, to excel at that. So the keys for the team-based discussion are um, self-awareness, uh, collaboration, um, and, you know, obviously you're going to be thrown together with a number of people who you've just met, but to the extent that you can get an understanding of who these people are, um, you know, even in a short time, the better positioned you will be to, to, to succeed. So I mentioned earlier that particularly in the first year, a lot of work is done in, in learning teams. This is a group of six people who the admissions committee effectively puts together randomly, um, trying to be representative of, of the student body and of the class. Um, so your ability to you know, effectively collaborate with and work with four or five other random people exactly mirrors what your experience will be as a first year. Um, so let's um, move forward. Yep, uh, example of a past prompt. So this gives you an idea of what um, what type of question you might get asked. Um, you've been asked to join a team tasked with developing a new leadership uh, new leadership venture, expedition intensive or workshop. And as a team, outline the purpose and structure of your venture and clearly define the measures of success. So you are going to, um, if we advance the slide, want to prep your prompt and practice your pitch. So this means you're going to want to think through your response. You're going to have one minute and you're going to want to practice that. Um, and you're going to want to pr be prepared with questions um, that you may be asked. And so you want to kind of think through what somebody else might ask you and think through what the answer will be, um, and you want to, you know, think about yourself as a member of the team. Not it's not about winning. There's no importance um, associated with having kind of the idea that's chosen. This is again about collaboration, and um, you know, you want to have a thought through, kind of well thought out, well prepared idea, but. That kind of that's the end of it. If if um, if somebody else's idea is chosen, then your best bet is to collaborate with the rest of the team to put forth the best end product. Um, so um, I would say, like I said, prepare, think ahead. Uh, but the big thing is be flexible. Try not to be too rigid in um, you know in kind of feeling like you have to take a particular role or in feeling that your idea has to be selected. Um, so next steps. Um, the most crucial thing is research. So I mentioned this already. And again, this is true for absolutely every business school, but particularly for Wharton and the way their essay questions are structured. Um, and, and frankly, even for the interview, if you are asked to interview, you're going to want to understand what ventures exist already. Um, so obviously, you know, I mentioned going onto the website, I mentioned, you know, kind of uh, understanding what's what's available, but um, a really great resource are people that you know. These might be colleagues, this might be former classmates. Um, you know, the more people that you can speak with who are alums or current students, not just of Wharton, but of every business school, um, the more that you can get kind of firsthand feedback on what it's like to be a student and on what people have been involved in, the better off you'll be. Um, Second thing I would absolutely have you focus on is goal development. So really thinking through what you hope to do after business school. So, you know, what are your short and your long-term career goals? And then how does business school play into that? So, you know, what specific skills and experiences do you need from an MBA in order to help you achieve the goals um, that you've set out for yourself? Um, I would start reflecting, right? So, um, you know, this is the time. So essay questions are just now being released. Um, Wharton's uh, coming out. Um, a number of other schools have already released. Um, and so 
you know, for every school, you've still got plenty of time to actually execute on the actual applications and the essays. But the more that you can prep that now and start thinking through what your answers will be, the better off you'll be. Um, and then, of course, obviously, happy to help if we can. And, um, and so please feel free to be in touch with us at Gatehouse if, um, if we can do anything to advise you or maybe um, uh, to collaborate. Uh, and then um, some questions and some answers about us. As I mentioned, um, we are highly specialized primarily on Harvard, Stanford, and Wharton. Um, we cover a range of schools, but because we are well-versed in those schools in particular, we've developed a number of kind of specific processes that we then are able to carry across um, the spectrum of schools. Um, we do have a small client roster. We do have um, a deep expertise and we do really view this as a partnership from our entire team um, with, our, um, with our clients. In terms of what we offer, uh, if we can advance the page, we obviously do one-on-one -on -one coaching for the MBA uh, process, for the application process. Um, and so that means that everything that we're doing is tailored to each client and is specific to what each client needs. Um, we do do mock interviews. Um, and uh, obviously in the case of Wharton, that means we, are, we will set up a, um, a group interview that mirrors the structure that Wharton actually uses. We will overhaul uh, resumes. We also offer um, post-mortem or ding analyses. If you did not get the results that you wanted, perhaps last year, and want someone to assess what you could do differently this year. Um, and we also offer advanced planning. So if you are, for example, looking to apply in a couple of years, we are able to help you think through now what you could be doing differently to position yourself best um, for success. So we also offer a variety of free materials on our website. So I would highly recommend taking a look at the videos we have, um, as well as uh, we you know, post um, commentary on a number of different essay and application questions. Um, so there's just a compendium of free resources that um, are very useful, regardless of what school you're thinking about applying to and, and kind of regardless of where you are in the process. Um, last thing I would say is, we do offer free consultations. So that's just a 30 minute consult where you answer a few basic questions for us. And we then um, kind of spend 30 minutes talking through your um, kind of your candidacy and your profile, answering obviously any questions you have, but then helping you to um, understand from our perspective, any key things um, that might be strengths or areas of opportunity. Um, so, you know, ho hope this has been helpful. If you do have an interest in learning more about um, the application process, um, please feel free to be in touch. And thank you very much for your time.